He is known for his contributions to the field of music as a composer. He honed his skills in piano and studied various aspects of music at the New England Conservatory of Music and Harvard College. His name is Leroy Anderson. In the small town of Cambridge, Massachusetts, a musical prodigy was born. Leroy Anderson, with his Swedish heritage, was destined to leave an indelible mark on the world of music. From an early age, his mother recognized his talent and became his first piano teacher. It was under her guidance that Leroy's passion for music blossomed. As he grew older, Leroy's dedication to his craft led him to the prestigious New England Conservatory of Music. There, he continued his piano studies, honing his skills and expanding his musical knowledge. But his journey didn't stop there. In 1925, Leroy entered Harvard College, where he delved even deeper into the realm of music. At Harvard, Leroy had the opportunity to study under renowned composers and musicians. He learned musical harmony from Walter Spaulding, counterpoint from Edward Ballantyne, and orchestration from Edward B. Hill and Walter Piston. These lessons laid the foundation for Leroy's future compositions, allowing him to create intricate and harmonious melodies that would captivate audiences around the world. After graduating with honors in 1929, Leroy continued his musical education at the Harvard University Graduate School. It was there that he studied composition under the guidance of Walter Piston and George Inescu. Leroy's dedication to his craft was unparalleled, and in 1930, he received his Master of Arts in Music. But Leroy's musical talents were not confined to the classroom. In the summers of 1930 and 1931, Leroy and his brother embarked on a musical adventure, playing in dance orchestras on Scandinavian cruise ships. These experiences not only allowed Leroy to showcase his musical prowess but also exposed him to different styles and cultures, enriching his musical palette. Leroy Anderson's journey from a small town in Massachusetts to the hallowed halls of Harvard University was just the beginning of his musical legacy. His dedication, talent, and unwavering passion for music would propel him to create compositions that would stand the test of time. Little did the world know that Leroy Anderson was about to become a legendary figure in the field of music, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of music lovers everywhere. Leroy Anderson, a talented composer and musician, continued his studies at Harvard University, focusing on German and Scandinavian languages. Growing up, Anderson was fluent in English and Swedish, and later became proficient in Danish, Norwegian, Icelandic, German, French, Italian, and Portuguese. While studying, Anderson held various musical positions, such as organist and choir director at the East Milton Congregational Church and leading the Harvard University Band. He also arranged and conducted for dance bands in the Boston area. In 1936, Anderson's arrangements caught the attention of Arthur Fiedler, the conductor of the Boston Pops Orchestra. Fiedler was impressed and asked to see any original compositions Anderson had. Anderson's first work, Jazz Pizzicato, was performed in 1938, but its short length prevented it from being released as a standalone record. Fiedler suggested that Anderson write a companion piece, and thus, Jazz Legato was born. The combined recording of the two pieces became one of Anderson's most well-known compositions. During World War II, Anderson joined the United States Army and was stationed in Iceland as a translator and interpreter for the U.S. Counterintelligence Corps. He also wrote and monitored local news media. In 1945, Anderson was reassigned to the Pentagon as chief of the Scandinavian desk of military intelligence. Despite his military duties, Anderson continued to compose music. That year, he wrote The Syncopated Clock and Promenade. After the war, Anderson's musical career took off. In 1951, he composed his first hit, Blue Tango, which reached the top spot on the Billboard charts and sold over one million copies. Throughout the 1950s, Anderson's recordings and compositions achieved immense commercial success. Sleigh Ride and The Syncopated Clock became some of his most famous pieces. Sleigh Ride was not initially intended as a Christmas piece, but rather as a depiction of a winter event. Anderson's unique musical style, which incorporated unconventional instruments like typewriters and sandpaper, made his composition stand out. In addition to his instrumental pieces, Anderson also composed the music for the Broadway show Goldilocks in 1958. Although the show received two Tony Awards, it did not achieve commercial success. Despite this setback, Anderson continued to write orchestral miniatures, such as The Typewriter, Bugler's Holiday, and A Trumpeter's Lullaby, which are still performed by orchestras and bands today. Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.